Good evening and welcome to the Digest. My name is Mlenga Esther Chibambi. Now last week we featured farmers using conventional farming methods which apparently are threatened due to the impacts of climate change. Zambia is experiencing shifting and shorter rain seasons. Farmers with hybrid seeds suffer the most part as many have medium to long term maturing seed that depend on fertilizer and the rains for sustenance and growth to yield a good and profitable produce. Thus far, the 2021 and 2022 farming season spells hunger for many small scale farmers in Zambia. However, is the hunger spell the same for farmers using other farming methods? Well, for Zambia, the climate change effects are mainly drought, flood, or both, and high temperatures, which of course have an impact on agriculture, as evidenced in last week's documentary. This week, we turn our focus to unconventional farming methods and highlight reasons as to why agroecology is the immediate to long-term solution to climate change effects on agriculture. Zambia faces severe challenges around malnutrition and hunger, biodiversity loss, soil erosion and degradation, and embedded rural poverty. These challenges are exacerbated by the already felt impacts of climate change. With the support of holistic policy and regulatory frameworks, smallholder farmers hold the greatest potential contribution to conserving and growing bio and agrobiodiversity ensuring nutrition and food security across the nation starting at the household level and building resilience to climate change. Mutintan Ketani is the national coordinator for Zambia Alliance for Agroecology and Biodiversity, ZAB, an alliance of member organizations networking to promote a way of farming called agroecology. Now agroecology is the way of farming that is in tandem with nature, basically considers um, where someone is doing their farming activities, the, the ecology around that place, and therefore how they uh, structure their farming such that they cause as little disturbance as possible to the environment and the entire ecosystem. Yeah, so in uh, terms of uh, what we are experiencing when it comes to climate change, agroecology is really uh, uh, considered as the way forward because climate change is, uh, you know, agriculture is contributing a lot currently to uh, the carbon footprint, that is the emission of uh, greenhouse uh, gases. And um, the, in agroecology, the, this is taken care of because uh, when you're farming with nature, one, you are causing minimum disturbance to the soil, minimum disturbance to any water bodies around you, you are talking about uh, agroforestry or at least maintaining the uh, tree cover that you find in, a, in an ecosystem and therefore it does reduce, contributes to the uh, reduction in uh, 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 green, uh, greenhouse gas emissions which is um, a, a major contributor to climate change. Community Technology Development Trust, CTDT, is a member of ZAB and its main focus is working with small-scale farmers promoting traditional crops and varieties to contribute to the household food and nutrition security as well as to become more resilient in terms of climate change. In layman's terms, CTDT's work is mainly dealing with the seed and this is called farmer managed seed system which reduces a farmer's dependence on purchased seed. Country director Charles Nkoma simplifies the meaning of agroecology. Well, you know, agroecology is, uh, you can say, it's a, it's a combination of uh, agriculture and the ecosystem. Uh, it is a practice uh, which has been there, you know, since time immemorial because farmers normally. Uh, combined their agriculture and their ecology. Um, it is a good practice because 
when done properly, one requires very little external input. Uh, it's agriculture and ecology because the ecology is providing the, the nutrition of the soils through the practices, the various practices of agriculture. Lave Timolanji is a resident of Kasongkamona village in Chieftainess in Commercial's Chieftain. He is a former voluntary and trained teacher, now full-time farmer, and he has been farming for two years. He is married, has five children, and has adopted agroecology practices. 2021, 2022 uh, season. I just did this planting during the dry season because uh, we had no expectance of the pattern of the rainfall. So I just did my dry planting. I was just doing some pot hauling until I just came up with an idea. So no, we shouldn't wait for the rains. Let's just keep on planting so that by the time the rains come, but that was around the 16th December when I planted my first planting here. In fact, the whole week of that, second week of December, we are busy preparing our land and doing the dry planting of maize itself and beans also on the other side and the ground nuts, we did those things in dry plant. So when the rains came, they found the different varieties of seeds are already on the ground or in the ground. So the first rains that we had, it made all these crops to germinate. As you can see, the height which they have reached at now. No, this is not the pace or maybe the size of the crop that we are supposed to expect because this is January. Had it indeed been that we had planted in time, maybe the rains had started earlier on as we are normally used to the pattern of rainfall, which starts early November, maybe mid-November. This crop was supposed to be almost tussling because this is January. And we should have also a medium size because we normally have some different intervals or maybe sizes. We don't like planting them at the same time, but it has been forced us to do that because of due to the rains that have came late. So we are not supposed to have such type of the stuff this time. Derano Jonga is a farmer in Ijamu village of Chief Bundabunda's chiefdom, Kampete Ward in Chongwe constituency. He started his farming after leaving work in 1999, and farming has been his source of livelihood since. He too is an agroecology farmer. Well, I, I planted my first crop in, uh, in uh, December, that just before Christmas, mm -hmm. just a few days before Christmas. Um, rains haven't been easy. It has been rough as farmers because uh, when the rains came, you know, the, the pattern is very different from each place. So f from the initial rains that we had, onset rains, we had uh, uh, little showers of which it was difficult actually for us to go into full time on the ripping or maybe, maybe trying to, to, to plow and plant. So we found ourselves now wait, waiting till the, the second rain. I think that's when I, when I, when I planted in uh, just shortly before Christmas. That is about 22nd. I think that's my first field that I planted, yes. We are not sure of uh, how we are going to, to harvest, how our harvest is going to be. Because as you know, we, we get the inputs well in advance. And if we fire, you, you, you buy a long range seed, what do you do when the rains delay? If you, fire, you buy a middle range seed, so you find you are, you are, now, uh, you are now found in a, in a very tight corner. Uh, I tell you this time, um, if they were in a, in a normal rain, uh, rainfall situation, this time uh, we are talking of today is about 10th, 10th of January. Uh, most of the early, um, the early maize would have been tussling by now. 
but uh, as you have seen, it's not the case. Yeah, so that is uh, how bad we are affected as farmers. On what I've done, especially because we are being taught on how to do agroecology farming, we are being taught how to use manure, how to make manure with the different types of, in fact, there are in two categories. We have got the solid manure and also the liquid manure. That we are being taught by Kasisi. Uh, for those who went for trainings like myself, I had gone for training and they normally came here to do some many trainings so that all the local farmers who are interested we are trained in this. So the type of system that we are, I'm doing for me to have a better harvest, I'm using the manure, which is called a, a bokash manure, which helps even the land because these chemical fertilizers, they don't work to utilize or maybe to make the soil to be rich. It only, the chemical fertilizer works direct to the plant. There is a difference between manure, compost manure, and the chemical fertilizers. So when you use this uh, uh, manure that you normally use, you find that it works on both the soil and the crop itself. So when you, your crop is ready, you harvest it off. But there is a certain benefit that you normally have because the land also has been utilized. It is now becoming rich. It has got a lot of nutrients now because of the manure type that we normally put in. So we expect a better, nice, and a test. As you can see, the plants, there is no much difference with the chemical fertilizer, applied one, and also this one that we are standing in behind us. To me, it is working. Just as you can see, it is working. Because I planted, despite that one, which is on the other side, is the fertilizer that we applied. It is a pana seed uh, type of seed that we applied. This one, the rains when it rained, it rained on the same day with that one and this one. So you can see in the height, and this one is Gankata. I normally call it um, AGS, the hybrid, the African hybrid that you normally have. This one is Gankata. But you can see from the height, this one is even going more than that one. Reason, it is what you can see because there is manure here. It is having everything, and the land is rich. But you can see, because we had beans last time, but it is not coming up very fast than this one. So I'm also learning on the better method of farming because I can see what is happening because I'm doing a lot of experiments. One of the things that I did with the main one that you, you saw there where you passed those small ones, I started by uh, trying to, to, to turn the soil so that uh, even with that small rain that we first got, at least those... Um, which were, which were there, we are going to rot and provide at least some, some good, to, you know, some good, to, you know, organic matter to, to feed the the, 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 crops so that they can grow fast, and that is what I've done. At least that's the main one. You say about uh, 20 kgs that I've planted. That is, uh, I've planted uh, uh, mm 68 and. Uh, and uh, uh, the other one for six, 53. Mm. So those are the, the two different, you, you have seen I've mixed, so that the, in case the other one adaptation, in, in case the other one may fail, maybe the other one I'm going, to, I'm going to get something. And as you have seen, we are doing this in order to, we are gambling. You know, as farmers, we are, we are like gamblers, eh? who try our lucky at times. Like this time when we see that uh, the rains are not normal, because this is not a normal situation. So we have gambled that way. Zinanga di nebeti, muranji, balaveti, ni bamuna banga, Ise tinabana bali na ise na bala beti tinabana bali five. Ise uli miti number twenty nineteen. Zaka zaka mbuyo benzo tazau tazau teacher so tenze kudima but it's tenze serious. 
Nepa me tambo ya tajoi na ma group ya bini kasi si aya. Tajoi na group ya ba kasi si ya boy ya mboti tandi zira kuti kuti buzati zimani vaso zimani vaso pa samantrisoni tambo ni ma kumasha ba na miri si na ma biensi so tambo pesa kubui no muri mi. So it's my pizza for me, it's out to sometimes it's a good sacco, the pizza was ten disiraco, the bracuja, the graco bracuja papa numba, so chabiti end. It's a moody mima too. Tima sends some manure. Mina would send some manure. Mina would send some fit rice. Bogashi, tea and dam sanga, the tenga matepo. Tatenga na manu wa yangombe, tatenga na na gaga, tatenga chape mamixta zambiri, taika mumchani, mu mu na tatenga na dochi apa churu, nini chambo kumani zamu chani, tika moche zambiri, matepo tepo, chani magaga, chani zambiri, sote kaka kumani zavija, chambo kumani zafu for one week. Tikuman is a vijavint. Nenti panga manua. Apia. A capia manja to put tishanga bells at Pamamba Pamanuaj. Demi is a met nashanga quid compuyo. Tinana tichacutia, good dala, tens of woodica chacutia, tens of goody reader. My masiqua num three is a metanka down at Tidima. Vamanu and a vacha and two nati vacuja panumba stiff woodica. City gula. Tipe za chaku tia chokuwa ni lachamine chwa tipe za bauti tijebu nuna wana. Yeah, the, the general narrative is that, especially in the production of maize, that uh, organic uh, fertilizers, for example, cannot uh, sufficiently provide enough nutrients, especially um, uh, uh, you know, urea, nitrogen to uh, sustain the production or the growth of a maize plant, for example. But that's not true because we have farmers that are growing maize and other crops uh, organically, and they are still able to get far much better results than uh, farmers that are using conventional uh, methods. So the reason why FISIV cannot get into uh, agro or why it is not getting into agroecology is that there is a misconception that uh, it's only through extensive use of chemicals. A lot of a, a lot of uh, uh, fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and now the introduction of the um, herbicides, which farmers have taken up, you know, hugely. To a very large extent, almost all the small-scale farmers are using herbicides, which makes it easier for them to weed. And but in the process, they are killing the soils and the environment around them, and further depleting the soils, and making it uh, difficult to grow without those inputs again. So it's very difficult to change the mindsets of uh, not just small-scale farmers, but also the people who who have been trained who have been trained, like the, the extension workers, have they have been trained to teach the farmers to depend on, on, on fertilizers and other chemicals. They don't have the knowledge. Yeah. But fortunately for us, uh, the Minister of Agriculture and Kasisi Agriculture Training Center have launched a diploma course in uh, sustainable organic agriculture. And this will be offered uh, at uh, various uh, government colleges including NRDC, and this is a very big step in, uh, in, in, in creating a cohort of extension workers that will then have this knowledge to take to the, because they will understand it from the scientific point of view and the practical point of view, um, and they, they will then transmit this knowledge to the small-scale farmers. So we, we are really, you know, we really appreciate this partnership with the, with the Ministry of Agriculture, where uh, Kasisi and Zab, Minister of Agriculture, the various the various uh, government colleges and training centers came together and developed this uh, a, the curriculum, which is now which was launched yesterday by by Kasisi. Yeah. Good as agroecology may be. 
question that begs answers is if as a country we have policy and regulatory frameworks that promote farmer-managed seed system and agroecology. The, the policies uh, and agroecology are not very strong. They are weak. Um, in the agriculture policy, they are mentioned you know, here and there on the importance of both uh, agroecology as well as uh, you know traditional uh, systems of seed uh, management. But these are not uh, adequate because um, they are competing with the externally driven uh, commercial production systems of agriculture which I've mentioned which are dependent on purchased seed, purchased chemicals, and so on and so on. So the, 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 the task really is, 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 is to bring the levels of prominence uh, at policy level of agroecology to the same level that you get uh, for the other agricultural system. According to what you have seen in this small test field, the whole of this lot of piece of land, I have applied manure fertilizer, which is the agroecology method that we are do doing. So with this one, um, I know, and I have already tested one time this manure stuff. The mess that I'm going to harvest here. When you eat it, these agrochemically variety of seeds or maybe plants that you normally plant, when you test it, it's so healthy, nutritious, and the tasty. It's so sweet. So the whole of this small piece of land, up to that end there, where we are planting a little bit of soya beans and sun hemp, it is where I've applied the manure. One might say theoretically what the people in the offices are saying is achievable. But is this the case with the farmers that have used agroecology? Just how beneficial are such methods to the farmer and his household? Well, I can boast myself, but which is not good because uh, <laughs> uh, if you had to move around in some other areas, just as around us, you would never find this size of mess that I have here. But when I was doing this, people were saying, what are you doing? Are you mad working in the sun? You think you're going to benefit what? No, other people have tried this, but I said, well, I'm using my own way, the method that I'm using, which I know. Right, if I use manure, you know, when, we have, no, when you don't have enough rains, just a little rain, you find that the manure itself, it keeps the moisture under the ground. When I had the first rains here, this crop germinated. Then the rains went off. For the past one month, the whole December we had no rain. Until January, the first two weeks of January, the first week of January, it was so hot and dry. But this maze, those who were coming here, they were getting surprised. Say, ah, but what about your crop? Why is it not drying? I said there is something that is underneath here. So I have learned that the manure keeps the moisture whereby the roots get moisturized under the ground so it cannot get dry it will keep on so when it rains like this the rains does as if they are revamping the manure now to start afresh that is what i've learned on this and to me it is of a benefit very much i'm better off because uh, you see one thing that um, that i think we 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 have learned in the, as, where the sky project is concerned, there's in permaculture where we are taught to have, uh, we are taught to say when you have an issue, a problem, you, you have to devise or have three possible solutions. So that if the first one fails, the second one, then at least the third one will work. So at least I've, I've done a bit better because uh, one that I can tell you is that uh, when you look at my field, I think uh, 
my field is better. The other, the other thing that I've done is because of uh, the training that I did, at least I've slowed the, the, the growth rate of the, of the weeds. So that means the weed control has been done. And at the same time, uh, what I've done is uh, I've avoided, uh, I've not used the uh, uh, weed killer. I've not used that. I've used the manual weeding uh, so that uh, uh, with manual weeding, you know, those, those weeds who, who rot, they won't die like when you spray. So that will be manure to the crops. So already that is where I, uh, my crops will do better than those people that are using maybe wheat killer and so on. So in anything, the way you plan where your work is concerned, we also plan as farmers. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, it always takes nature to, to show you sometimes that you are, you are wrong in your practices. Because uh, what will happen in this particular season is that all those areas where farmers planted seed which they got through FISIP and their chemicals, the crop will suffer. Okay? But you will look at uh, other crops, the sorghums, the alternative crops, the sorghums, millets, cowpeas, cassava, and so on. Those are going to fare far much better, despite that they would not have received any support. That is purely just by changing the climate a little bit. You get these uh, differences. The farmers that practice agroecology and the seed systems that we promote are assured of our sort food and nutrition security. Definitely, they are better off. The farmers that grow, um, that practice uh, agriculture based on mono crops, hybrid maize, for example, together with fertilizer. Even when they produce well, the only beneficiaries is the market. At household level, they cannot subsist on just maize at all. Yeah. I would also um, advise to start with my neighbors. After my neighbors and those who are going to, to see what is going to happen, on what I've done because this is my second year of testing all these things. The manure itself and people are looking on it to say, ah, but we can see some changes because for any information, this land was not as it is today. People didn't like to stay here. When I was given this land by the head person, people were saying, ah, there is nothing that is going to do. Then I said, well, I'm going to work on it. So I've been working on it. So as people can see, I'm urging my fellow small scale farmers to cope from what I'm doing, and to learn also. Let them come and see what is happening here. We're a group of people, which is uh, under Sky, that is the Seed Knowledge Initiative uh, uh, program that we are doing. So I'm just urging my fellow friends to say, let's cope this system of agroecology farming because the pattern and also the climate, there is a lot of weather changes in the world. So let's cope and follow what we are supposed to do in agroecology. We thank also the Cassis people who are pushing this program very seriously. Ningaba was at Baka Bue, Amena Zaka and Viraco program, Aka Bue, Akapunzi, they called him Miwa Bogashi, Miwa Buino, Super Sanjara Panyumba. I would say that we need to, people need to take time to understand. We have a few people, uh, our allies within the Ministry of Agriculture, within University, at the University of Zambia, uh, we have people who understand the science behind agroecology, sustainable organic agriculture. And um, people, policymakers need to understand, need to begin to understand why 
the, the system that has been used is getting more and more expensive and not producing the desired results. FISIP is a program that has been running since 2002-2003 and from that time no, none of the people that have been on FISIP have been weaned off. The program was supposed to be weaning off people that are improve in productivity, therefore they reach a certain stage where they feel that now they are self-sustaining. But that has not happened. Things. Instead, the numbers keep increasing because there is very little progress that is seen. So we can't keep using the same system and expecting that, uh, you know, miraculously, the EU, people, people's yields, that has, uh, uh, has shown that uh, conventional farming is not working for a small scale farmers. So it's an appeal to our policymakers to begin to understand exactly what, what is wrong, what is going wrong, why hasn't FISIP worked, and we are here to, to provide uh, those answers and also provide uh, alternatives to <coughs> how FISIP can be restructured. Yeah, so it would be good to see a FISIP program where um, maybe segmented for those that would want to transition, those that would be taught to say, if you transition over time, then you will have built your soil health. It is cheaper in the, in the long run. It is cheaper, therefore more profitable, even in the production of maize, because then you don't spend so much of your money buying chemicals, external inputs. In agroecology, we, would also, we also encourage people to grow their own seeds, propagate their own seeds. Uh, we have a lot of local seeds in Zambia which are not being utilized right now, which are just dying out, and we are trying to revamp those. So we encourage the farmers to grow their own seeds, on farm diversification, crop diversification, as a key to not only uh, uh, food security, but also nutrition and income security. So we would like to see that happening, but at the same time, we also understand that it will, it takes a lot of, uh, you need to build the knowledge of the people, them, the policy makers themselves to understand why uh, this direction. So it's about the economics of, of, of production. You will find that for a farmer who is using their own uh, on farm uh, manures, it, like, it's not, it has to be an integrated system where they have small livestock, which is giving them probably manure or some, or they can buy from the neighbors that manure. They make compost or so many other fertilizers that have come uh, on, uh, on board now. People know how to make these organic fertilizers. Kasisi, for example, has uh, a, a, a developed a fertilizer called Bokashi, which is very, very effective. And uh, farmers are trained for free how to make Bokashi. So you can make these, and you, all the materials that are used are found on the farm. So there, uh, it is possible to actually transform FISIP to support this part of uh, production, while others can continue if they want with organic, an inorganic way of farming. But I think that the best way to go right now, especially for the small-scale farmer who is not making profit from, especially maize production, is to cut down on costs of production by transitioning to agroecology. Well, uh, the appeal really to stakeholders is that uh, I, I, I think there's a, there's a big role that they have to, to, to take, uh, especially that uh, uh, our economic situation as farmers will not be as good as it used to be. And that is why it is always uh, uh, it was always good to anticipate that the times are not the same. Yeah. So stakeholders should really help us, especially where it concerns the pricing and uh, many other, even the loans that uh, some people are doing this because they've gotten loans and so on. Yeah. So let there be consideration because they should know it's not a normal season. And at the same time, uh, we should, you know, food security is threatened. And as such, I think uh, there is a need for us to work together so that uh, whatever little we harvest, at least will be, will, be, will be saved nicely, will be kept nicely, so that at least the nation will not go hungry. 
First of all, I think the farmers need, have to be proud of their practices. Those practices are not inferior. I think they, they've been receiving negative messages for too long to the point where even them sometimes believe that they, they have, their practices are inferior. No, they need to be proud. They need to be vocal. They need to, to express themselves you know, to government, to other stakeholders, that they need support in that system of production, which is based on agroecology. Um, yeah, so basically, um, in terms of for the government also, is simply realigning the same amounts of money that the government is spending on agriculture now can be realigned uh, to address more and more uh, the aspects of agroecology. And the benefits will be more sustainable. You see, right now, FISIP is, 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 is continuous. You cannot stop it. Government stops it this year, there is an outcry. If support goes to agroecology, within a very short time, you reach a stage where there will be no need for too much you know, input of that support. So it's actually good, not just for the farmers, agroecology is good even for the government. In the long run, it's actually cheaper even for the government. That is it for today. Apparently, the answers to climate change is back with human behavior towards the environment in which we operate. The Ministry of Green Economy must work with the Ministry of Agriculture to promote methods such as agroecology and like continuing on the agropolitic trajectory of farmer support input program of chemical fertilizers and herbicides as these are a danger to the ecosystem. Climate change, agroecology is the solution. Remember, your feedback is always appreciated, so send us that email via documentaries at diamondtvzambia.com. Until next week, pleasant viewing.